Happy Easter! Christ is risen! Christ is risen indeed. The Easter story starts in a cemetery, but of course does not end there. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. of Lent and this last week in Holy Week, we focused on growing gardens, tending the life that's right in front of us, rather than constantly climbing ladders of what this world defines as success. We have been embracing good enough lives and good enough selves that are worthy of love no matter what. We have been acknowledging the suffering that is a natural part of life. We have proclaimed compassion as we deal with the realities and limitations that invite us to let go of perfectionism and the incessant drive towards something other than our own real, holy, and blessed, regardless lives. And now, we encounter Easter. It's a day we proclaim that while death is a part of life, even little deaths along the way of dreams, of love, of the way we thought life would go, even though this is a part of life, we are part of a faith that invites us to consider that the good gardener is always tending us, abiding with us, and beyond any kind of death, that faces us.
Holy One, you whose love endures forever, you keep offering us new life and new hope no matter what. We praise you for you are our strength and our salvation. We shall not die but live for you call us into the light, encouraging us to reach for the sun, unfurl our full colors, and know that we are held in the deep and rich soil of your garden. This is more than good enough for us. Amen. Easter is tricky when it comes to faith. We come for the happy ending, the and then they lived happily ever after. The resurrection story proclaims hope over despair and life over death. Yet we know that life continued and continues for us as a story of spiking heartbreak moments that are not forever fixed. The nature of being created for love is that we will always hunger for more, that there's never enough life and love to satisfy. And endings are often too soon. But perhaps a good enough faith is one that moves through the chronic nature of being incurably human with an eye for resurrection moments that assure us that this good enough life is worthy of our amazement. I invite you to imagine in this silence the deep seed and shoot that is growing within you, yearning for light and life. Hear this compassionate word from the prophet Isaiah. I am about to create new heavens and a new earth. The former things shall not be remembered or come to mind. But be glad and rejoice forever in what I am creating. For I am about to create Jerusalem as a joy and its people as a delight. Know that already God is offering us freedom from the fear of isolation and anguish at endings, inviting us to community and creativity for birthing new life, unexpected life, unending love. And know that despite our sometimes faltering steps, in the name of Jesus Christ, you are being forgiven, even now. Glory to God. Amen. day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, 
They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings there, but he did not, he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and she told them that he had said these things to her. British gardener named Steve Owen specializes in prize-winning breeds of snowdrops. He pulled a pot from the shelf, white petals dangling downward as if about to drip from the delicate green stalk. Beaming, he described how this was the first time this plant had ever bloomed after 14 years of tending it. Most of the time it had been a fight to keep it alive. Alleluia, he declared joyously. Gardening requires a certain kind of hope, envisioning new life in the midst of despair and death. Gardeners toil and trowel, pluck and prune, all for a single bloom. The very act of gardening is one of hope and it is the exact kind of hope that a woman was hunting for that first Easter morning. The sun hasn't peaked over the horizon yet. The greenish haze of the moon offers barely enough light to move about. And according to John's Gospel, Mary Magdalene is awake. Grief does that to you. 
The day stretches into night, the moon chases the day into day again. The unsettled mind and heart are restless. Even grave robbers, even Gentile grave robbers, would have left the body as a sign of respect. It's too much to bear, and yet Mary stays. Why are you crying? Is a strange question to ask in a cemetery. Why are you crying? Note that the resurrected Christ is mistaken for the gardener. Maybe the resurrected Christ looks ready to cultivate new life, to pull us toward resurrection with his fingers digging in among the dirt and worms. Or maybe this gardener looks like he knows something about hope. Mary needs hope. We all need hope. The kind of hope it takes to sow a seed in the ground, to cover it with soil and nutrients, to bury it in the cold winter dirt, surrounded by naked trees, to leave it be for months, trusting that with water, air, and time, something new will be born. A seed doesn't taste very good or have much nutritional value. It really has no purpose until it's planted by a good gardener. Yet, inside a tiny seed is all the genetic information needed to grow into a complete plant. And under the right conditions, this tiny speck will sprout and root, bud and bloom. What grows might provide food, shelter, or a sense of awe. A giant sequoia, a raspberry bush, a peony, but you have to bury it. This gardener knows the hope it takes to believe that through the death, the freezing, the fire, the floods, the darkness, the crushing, the waiting, even there, new life can be born. This is the radical moment of new life bursting forth from seeming death. Gardeners are delighted, but not surprised. They know what can grow out of the cold, hard winter ground. And while spring may be predictable to gardeners, resurrection is not. This gardener knows something about that, though. Mary doesn't recognize the gardener is Jesus, not until he calls her by name. Like a gardener who can name every variation of plant growing in the plot. What is it about this voice that feels so recognizable? What, it is, what is it about your name or a familiar tongue that feels so comforting? Finally, Mary knows. Rabboni, she exhales the weight of despair. Maybe this is what it means to be an Easter person, to see Christ and think gardener, not as a mistaken identity, but as a prophetic one. The seed in the ground, the body in the tomb, this is a picture of defiant hope. All of the labor and sweat and love and precious time for a single bloom, delicate and bold, brief but memorable. Maybe your thoughts are turning toward your own garden and what you might plant there in this growing season that is coming up. What seeds are we planting in the garden God has given us? Let's plant them together and tend them together and watch them grow together. Alleluia! Indeed. Amen. You're the one that guides my heart. Lord, I need you. My righteousness.
Blessed are you who are buried, you who feel stuck in the depths of grief and despair, who, or who are in the pit of unknowing, you who are learning to trust the timing of a tender gardener. Blessed are you who are growing, you who burst with new life, fresh creativity, who understand the pain that sometimes comes with stretching and changing, pruning and being cut back. 
and blessed are you in your season of fruitfulness. You who are learning to abide in the vine and who taste the sweetness of God's loving kindness, the God who was there all along, planting, waiting, watching, pruning, delighting, the God who pays careful attention to God's garden. And now may the God who loves all of creation, especially the gardens we call our lives, and Jesus, our companion along this crooked path called life, and the Holy Spirit who loves to improvise in surprising ways, like sending ducks to the cemetery while you're trying to film Easter Day, <laughs> and ice melting from the trees, that's a Thank sign you, of God, <laughs> for all of these signs of spring. May God go with you, dwell among you, and give you joy. Amen. Amen. We hope you're enjoying Pod Church. Please take a moment to subscribe to our channel and be notified each time there's a new video. Join us Mondays at 9 a.m. on Zoom for our Disciplines Study Group, where we reflect on the lectionary passages of the last week and share our insights in an interesting, engaging, and first thing Monday morning conversation. For more information, check your newsletter or on Facebook as well. See you there. Be sure to check out our online newsletter and Facebook for upcoming and up-to-date events for Holy Week and beyond. Pod Church is the weekly online worship of Marquette Hope, a United Methodist faith community located in Michigan's Upper Peninsula. Find us at facebook.com slash mqthope, mqthope.com, and on YouTube.